Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 245 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. What's up? Well, Barb, we haven't talked since Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah. And the world wants to know, what's it like taking a private jet to the Keys and spending the holiday on a warm beach? It was unbelievable. Honestly, my nephew is an amazing pilot. No nerves. You get out of the car, into the plane, and you're in the Keys in an hour. That's awesome. (laughs) I mean, like, that's a no-brainer, right? And then... We got to the Keys, and they were in this tiny little house. And so I said, I'm out. And I went and stayed in a big old beautiful house with uh, my sister's friends. And um, it was really good time. Nice. Really good time. Yeah. What's the weather in the Keys in the end of November? 87. God. <laughs> yep. I think I went for a run on Thanksgiving, and I think it was below 20. Oh, my yeah. God, you're crazy. You're just I am crazy, but I'm also a runner, so there you go. I'm a runner, too, and I ran in the Keys and swept my ass <laughs> off and had a blast. <laughs> Thank you for asking. That's awesome. We're all a little jealous. That's why we ask. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Don't feel sorry. It's... <laughs> I'm not sorry. Yeah, I'd take advantage of it if I had the <laughs> opportunity. So something funny happened to me this week. For all of our listeners that follow us on social media, you know I'm into the memes and I do oh, yeah. a lot of dental You're memes. Everybody knows that. Yes, I do a lot of them. And they're not always super kind to dentist. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> it's my audience that I'm working with here. And I walked into an office. I've known this dentist for quite some time, but I haven't visited with her for a while. And, you know, after the f- catching up, she's like, yo, I do follow you on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, wow. the podcast? She's like, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I see those memes and I wonder if you're thinking about me. Did I do that? Oh, that's great. <laughs> That's so perfect. I and thought it was said, hilarious. No, no, no. It's not you. No, it's that not you. No. I roll. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, you did one about a same day service, 45 minutes away. And I'm yeah, we're about 45 minutes away from the lab. <laughs> That's perfect. Don't get yourself in trouble, partner. Yeah. Yeah. It's never happened, but I, it was bound to happen eventually, I guess. So. If I offend you, I'm sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, I'm not really sorry. It's exactly. it's all in good fun. I know you're not sorry. I make fun of ourselves enough to balance it out. Oh, I love the leather pants, Joe. That was <laughs> That went nuts. That was great. And if you don't know about the leather pants, go check out <laughs> fans of Voices from the Bench on uh, Facebook. Yeah, that was great. Good job, Joe. And you'll never be able to sleep again. All right. <laughs> So this week, we're actually wrapping up the conversations that Barb and I got while we were at the Whitmix Digital Forum. Yeah. It is the last of the group. And I don't think we need to remind you how great this meeting is. So be sure that when they announce the next one for 2023, which they said they are going to, that we're going to keep you updated on it. So plan to be there. It's such a great show. But this week, we have two guests that Barb and I have wanted on the podcast for quite some time. True to that. First up is a guy so into dental lab work, he changed his name. He changed his name, y'all. Just yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> Step Toothmaster Bay finally sits down with us to talk about his history, his history with the DTG, what's he doing now, and his newest hobby where he's wondering if others in our community want to be dealt in. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. I want to say something about Step real quick. Yeah. So when we have guests on, I always ask for a headshot and a bio so I can create a guest page for the website and to promote it. Well, Step sent me a picture. (laughs) I really don't look at the pictures too hard. It's just like, okay, that's what they want me to use. Great. So here it is Friday before this episode goes out. I want to promote the episode. I use his picture and people start laughing at the post. And I'm like, what are they laughing at? And Sean Nowak is the one that eventually said, that's a funny picture of Step. Are we going to start drifting? And I'm like, what? 
Turns out Step sent me a picture of a guy from Fast and the Furious. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) It was probably the ultimate troll. I had no idea. I don't know that series too well. I thought he just had a really fancy photo of himself. Nice. (laughs) I Luckily, I took it down. I changed it, but... I did see that post, just saying, but I didn't figure it out either, so... Props to you, Step, for probably the funniest thing anyone's ever done to me. (laughs) But it's not just Step on this episode. We also finally got to talk to the man behind the PTC training program, James Mahan. Yes, finally. Yeah, Yeah, you guys are big into PTC, aren't you? Yeah, Yeah, I was super excited about that. So James talks to us about the history of the PTC and Blue Dolphin. You know, the importance of teaching analog methods with today's technicians, some of the ways to implement it into your lab, and where the program is going to stay current with today's digital workflows. These are two great conversations that we got while at the Whitmix Digital Forum. So join us as we chat with Step Toothmester Bay and James Mahan. Whitmix is thrilled to announce their most recent addition to their milling product line, introducing the DWX-53DC from DG Shape. This powerful mill satisfies your need for speed. Three reasons to consider this mill. One, it has three times the gripping power for PMMA. Two, it mills 30% faster. And three, The integrated webcam allows you to monitor a milling project from anywhere on any device. Head over to tinyurl.com slash Mill. That's the word tiny, the letters U-R-L, dot com forward slash Whitmix, R-O-L-A-N-D, mill. Or head over to this episode's show notes for a link. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. All right. Let's land this motherfucker. (laughs) Sounds like a ceramist. Let's go. Are you a ceramist? I am a ceramist. That's what I like to say. I became a ceramist one day. One day? Yes, and and it was not expected because it was how do you how do you say I've been a I've been a model technician for for a very long time. And then I was a waxer for a very long time yeah. waxer metal finisher yeah. and i think i was still at about eighth year in my career where i still haven't touched ceramics really yeah so doing ceramic work was like always the thing for me it was like an ultimate goal for me yeah. all right let's let's introduce you yeah let's stop for a second okay step bay hello everybody oh, this yeah. is step to the master is... bay <laughs> so yeah i've seen you online a ton thank you yes yeah. Thank you. And I've always been fascinated by your name. Yes. Is Toothmaster just like a nickname or is it actual name? It's You're a, the Toothmaster? I am the Toothmaster. Oh, my God. Where that, did that That person from? is me. That's cool. Yeah. So so it's an actual name, and it is an actual name because now I have legalized it, and it's in my driver's you license. You legally changed cool. your middle I name legal, to Toothmaster? Yes. I was trying to make my last name as Toothmaster because... You know, like that's what they did a long time ago. Like when people were coming over to the Ellis Island, their family name was was their job occupation. Yeah, yeah. Really? that's how Baker yeah. got Baker, into it. Baker, Carpenter, all these job names. Wow, they I used to be that, that profession. Cool. So I thought, you know, I'm so deep into this profession now. I want to become a toothmaster and name myself a toothmaster. But my wife at the time, you know, she raised hell about it. <laughs> she raised the hell about She's it. She's like, you can change yeah. your name, but there's no way no, I'm changing yeah. mine. So I no. settled for my middle name Yeah, <laughs> as a toothmaster. But, so it's you know, legal. That's it is legal. Great. TSA people love me. I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Why? You know, peop- because, like, you know, you know, you, you see people working at TSA. They're, they're always miserable. Yeah. They have no enjoyment in their work. And only time they get to laugh is look at my ID and be Toothmaster, <laughs> and they give me a big smile. So cool. here, here we go, Steph. I, I'm with you because yeah. I legally changed oh, my name here we go. to Elvis. Really? Probably. You did that? Probably about I don't know what's it like. Because you were a big ago. fan. Big fan. 
and I wanted to kind of stir my life up. I was like, get you know, out of here. Really? You did so that 12 I, years ago? Yeah, I legally changed my middle name. I changed my Elvis. name about tw- 12 years ago. See, there you go. Wow. And same thing. Yeah. And then he got famous. I go to TSA. Uh huh. They look. They look at me. They uh-huh. look at the name again. They're like, <laughs> what? You're in the building. Or <laughs> do you dance? Or what color are your shoes? I get it all. So I hear you, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't realize yep. you legally made it, Toothmaster. I legally changed it. Yeah. So the backbone of that story is I used to work at this laboratory up in Seattle okay. area. And the owner's wife, she used to drive this Saab. And the license plate had number two TH Lab. Nice. And I was so inspired by that. <laughs> I uh, you, you immediately clicked to me, and I got a new Gmail account as a step Toothmaster ah. using that number two TH. And that Toothmaster, you know, stuck with me ever since. Yeah. Wow. So go back. You were talking about how you did model work, and then you did waxing, and then uh-huh. ceramics was something that you always aspired to do. So right. but how'd you get into to. it? Well, so 2009... While I still haven't experienced ceramics, I started my own laboratory. Good for you. And just pouring models? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so this time it was like a transition of our industry where digital. we were not not just digital. I wasn't really into digital, but there was a trend before the digital transition. There was a transition going into the lithium, the silicate market. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I recall. And, and that was a huge advantage for me as a waxer because I knew how to wax the full crowns on the posteriors and anteriors, press it into lithium, the silicate, and just stain in glaze without putting any uh, ceramics Layering. in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was actually able to produce a crown with my techn- Skill. skills that yeah. I had at the time. That makes sense. But after you know two years of operation, which was very successful and busy, I was looking at the future, yeah. and I saw my future as running this laboratory. I wanted to continue to keep a, a successful laboratory, and I, c- I could not picture myself running this laboratory successful without a skill of layering ceramics. Yeah. So I pushed myself and really dove into it. So how did you do that? Did you go to a bunch of courses or just start so playing around? Yeah, and one, one good thing that really helped me was ever since I started my career, I was always in the dental shows. Yeah. Mm. I was Smart. dental shows like Chicago Midwinter, you know, I, I grew up in New York so it was like Terra Town meetings, yep. LMTs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Greater New York. All and right. most of these lectures that you would attend to, they would talk about ceramics. <laughs> which at the time was kinda irrelevant for for my skill set. Sure. But gaining those informations over the years really had boosted me when I first started to try ceramics yeah because you had all this knowledge behind you you just hadn't sat down and done it yet right makes a lot of sense and and there was like big factors and a lot of mentors that i have gathered informations from over the years like naoki aiba like peter pz oh yeah and mclaren Mm -hmm. like without those three teaching what they were teaching back in the days like i would not be in here yeah, big names. Yeah. yeah. They did a lot yeah. for the industry, that's for Those sure. Those three really made it. Yeah. Those guys are locked out. <laughs> this is what happens when you're live. You've got yeah. people knocking on the door. We're looking around. Don't there let them in. Go. No, no, don't let them in. <laughs> I don't trust them. <laughs> All right, so you started layering. What's yes. your favorite uh, porcelain? So my favorite porcelain right now is GC Initial. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. And you use I, mean, the I, I do a lot of work with them. Not as much as I used to anymore, but but I still love using initial porcelains. And you're using Lisi? Yes. Is mm-hmm. it Lisi or Lisi? Lisi. Okay. Yeah. I Lisi. thought so. Yeah. All right. Lisi. Sweet. Lisi, Lisi. Yeah, there was well, a little confusions and yeah, controversial <laughs> questions. Well, that's, that's the old Mio Mayo. Yeah. What is it? You know? <laughs> It's Make it your own. Mio. Well, everybody know knows that, that now. <laughs> it's definitely Mio. But when it came out, everyone was like, Mayo? Like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So are you specializing in all, uh, all ceramics now? Do you do dentures? No. Do you do implants? I, I never really did dentures. I was al- always specializing in all ceramics. That's yeah. awesome. I'm so a ceramist, so yeah. I'm digging you. Yeah. Sorry, Elvis. No, it's all right. This you, is good. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so... When I started my laboratory, I was living in my townhome at the time. Okay. And we had one extra bedroom that mm-hmm. used to be my kids' playroom. 
So I tr converted that small little, you know, 8x8 eight eight room yep. into a, a laboratory, and there was not going to be any casting system in my house. Yeah. Because I was using part of my master bedroom's bathroom <laughs> for burnout. <laughs> oh, shit. And then I was using my garage for, like, model and plaster. Hey, whatever <laughs> and it takes. And the kids, bedroom, kids' playroom was, was actually my, wow. my bench and office. So there was, no, there was no room for casting. It was just all, all ceramics. Awesome. So mostly just lithium to silicate. You yes. were obviously weren't well, milling. Well, or now, anything. you know, with the industry has changed, like, I have a lot of zirconia now. Mm -hmm. but You're still in like, that one room? Hell no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. He graduated. <laughs> I graduated that one room a long time ago. Now I have a, now I have a beautiful laboratory yeah. above my detached garage. Where are you at? Where are you located? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you the only one in the lab, or do you have Right employees? now I am. Yeah. Yeah, there, w there was a time where I had about four employees, but right now I am working in the lab by myself. And it's it's good with that right now because I am, again, having another transition in my life where I'm operating the, the laboratory as more of a intimate boutique. Yeah. Sure. Laboratory, because I, I can only spend two days working there now. I have a new job in Atlanta as an in-house dental technician for a big dental group. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, so, so you fly to out to Atlanta? Um, I wish I can, but f for some crazy reasons, flying from Charlotte to Atlanta is really expensive. It's like really? four hundred dollars a round ticket. Oh, that's stupid. When I could yeah. fly to New York for two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have to drive four hours. That's it's not too bad. Yeah, it's a weekly commute. Yeah. I only work three days over in Atlanta. So are I don't you mind training or are you actually on the bench? Or are you training or doing a little bit of both? I am not really training because I am in-house tech. And the only thing that I have to train the ladies that work there is, you know, how to use the equipment in the laboratory. Sure. And yeah. the new suction units that, that right. they have. And surprisingly, nobody ever has seen a steam machine. A steam really? machine? I know, right? That's I knew crazy. you. I know you. I knew you guys were going to make this I've got at least safe. ten of them in our lab. I, I swear. Shoot. I know. So there's this there's this huge thing where dental offices they have all these equipments to be equipped as a you know small s laboratory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they want to keep these essential tools, but they got everything but the steam machine. Nobody really buys steam machines in dental practices. Really. What you didn't know use? that, right? No. Start visiting dentist office and ask them if they have a steam machine. They they'll be like, "No, we don't. We don't press anything here. <laughs> no dry cleaning." Yeah, yeah, dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't clean that way. Yeah, no. So <laughs> I've got a question. It. What are you doing it. here? I I noticed that you were over there with uh, Wagner. Is yeah, that so company? uh huh. So Wagner Rotary Instruments are, you know, my one the of bomb. my biggest one of my <laughs> biggest <good>. sponsors. Ah, <laughs> uh, gotcha. And I enjoy working with them for the shows. I really haven't done much of like behind the booth work yeah. for companies in the past, but with Wagner, I recently started doing it, and it's it's fun. Yeah, you know, and they're they're family owned company. Larry's a great guy. You know, he's always entertaining. Great tools that I use in my laboratory. Yeah, it's it's fun working behind the booth. Yeah, well, I, I don't think, think it's I'm important gonna be doing to have a technician. This. At a show like this, that you can actually sit down, you have a handpiece, you showed right. me how to use yes. some of the different instruments, and it's like, yeah, I mean, uh -huh. it's hands so on. So, like, table demonstration, you know, I, I've been doing that for a while, but, wor like, working at the booth is, is a different story, because, yep. like, you're going to have to be there at the booth for the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm more used to running around, going into, you know, breakout sessions. Sure. Learning. And then spend spend my thirty minutes or an hour, you know, behind the booth, mm -hmm. behind the booth, just for a yeah. quick demonstration. You yeah. get nervous having technicians come up and watch you, maybe no, judge never. you a little bit, be like, "What no. are you doing there?" No, yeah. no. There was, technicians there was aren't judgy. Whatever. We're of course. freely given with our knowledge. <laughs> the <laughs> technicians are most to judge people <laughs> ever. I'm not, I don't Have do that. I don't use that. Online? My <laughs> central looks better than that. My texture looks better than that. You're not supposed yeah. to grab the handpiece that way. <laughs> yeah. That's not the way. How I dare you it. give a hammer grip to a pen? <laughs> Well, I personally uh, checked out the instruments and uh, the rotary instruments, and they were pretty sweet. Yeah, you guys yeah, have a lot to offer. Material. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I got to get our lab into switching. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's awesome. So talk about DTG. When did you hook up with them? It's been a while since we've had uh, it's anyone from DTG. Yes, it's been and a while. And you're DTG, like, certified, which means you 
What does that mean? What, what does it mean, DTG? Well, not everybody has it <laughs> on their name tag. Well, though. no. You have it, to. It's not a certification. You have to earn it. I thought it's, it's not a certification. So, so there was a lot of talk about that the DTG lettering thing, yeah. because it's not a certification. It never was a certification. Sure. But what happened was, for those members, we only have about roughly 150 members around the world, by the way. And those members, they were very proud of oh, yeah. becoming a member of sure. DTG. So they, like, I didn't start it, but I don't know who started. Vaughn, I thought. No, I'm, I'm talking about who put the DTG oh, behind oh, their name. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But wh whoever started, I don't know who, but... When that started, you know, everybody started to put that behind their name, you know, with great pride. Great pride. Yeah. Sure. Pride, yeah. So it was never a certification. It's it was just a thing. Yeah. Right? And 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 there were certain members that never decided to put DTG behind their name. There were people that decided to put DTG behind their name. There, there's it's a mixture of people. Sure. You know. I do recognize, though, that it means high end and pride, and you know, it's, it's yeah, definitely it, it definitely started that way. Yeah, yeah, okay. and then there was some curvy bumps. Yeah, and there always are. Yeah. There always are, and I'm hearing new things about how they're gonna do another symposium next yeah, year. Yeah, I think cool. that's cool. exciting. Yeah, it is, but it's it's. I'm wondering how this is going to turn out because there has been a huge change in the group. Mm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of politics, a lot of talks. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit different, I think. Will yeah. you go to the symposium? Uh, for sure. Yeah, good. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's cool. Yeah. So what's next for you? What's next for me is the thing that's happening with my life right now. <laughs> I hope that's good, this, not bad. <laughs> I yeah, asked the this, question. <laughs> this transition of me working with working at a dentist office is pretty exciting. Do yeah. you like working with dentists, like one on one, I, like I that? I love it. Seeing the patients. I love it. Working closely at the dental clinic was—I've already have experience with this because when I first came to Charlotte, I came to Charlotte. For uh, for my job, which I had at the Nash Institute, uh, working wow. working closely with Dr. Nash, yes, and another amazing these, clinician. Yeah, seeing these people, uh, patients, yeah, and you know, I would, you know, for me working there for four and a half years, I was at the course. Yeah, <laughs> every course he had, I was there wow. for four and a half years for free. Yeah, so the amount of education that I got was just so valuable, valuable to me, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Every minute of it. So you earn that name. Heck yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I and and ever since ever since I left that institute, I always missed how did this interaction with patients mm -hmm. and dentists and that and, emotion and the, and the staff. And the patients, I love yes, it. the the, mo the emotional part yeah. w is where I really missed. That's cool. I I remember watching these, you know, like 50-year-old patients and 60-year-old patients just with their diagnostic wax up temporary is on they would look in the mirror and just break out in tears yeah they would hold my hand and thank, thank me. you yeah like because this is like something they've been waiting for their whole yeah. life you know and you're like this is just temp wait <laughs> i know i know right <laughs> and, and, they, and then they see the temp and they hate you because <laughs> they, <laughs> they love the acrylic for yep. you know they love the acrylic that they had to wear for a month they oh. got so used to yep. it <laughs> I have my temp back. <laughs> yes, yeah, they yeah. always ask for those things. Yeah. Well, well, you got to make the temps a little less bright, and then the <laughs> finals a little brighter, if that makes sense. Yeah. And mm -hmm. If you make the temps too white, and mm -hmm. then you go, oh, I've had that happen, and it's like, yes. oh. yeah. Yeah, and the acrylics, you know, they it feels good. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks different. Yeah. So and how do you handle your own lab and then also drive eight hours out of your way to work Ooh. somewhere else? So that's pretty tough because, you know, I have time limits. Yeah. So I can only work on, like, a case or two. A week? A week. Wow. Of your own? Of or my own. Okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, me working at the dentist office, I get paid by daily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. by the hour. You know, I'm not their employee. They they hire me as an independent contractor. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the, the dentist that I work with, very smart guy. Yeah. Very, very, very smart guy. We've been working together for the past 11 years, mm. and we always talked about working together in his office. 
it was just that you know he never threw out the number that I liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you were worth. Yes, yeah. but you know this this year was was the year because you know the practice grew significantly over the past ten years, and it was last Friday when they finally uh, closed the deal and the practice sold to uh, what you call it DSO. DSO. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heartland. It's not those huge yeah, ones. Yeah, it's one but of the it's a many, smaller, many smaller yeah, ones. Yeah, I, I, I heard they have about like twenty to yeah. twenty-five to thirty oh, offices. Nice. There's yeah. a lot of those Georgia there. area. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of um, technology do you, are you? Does he have in that office for you to? As, play as in with? the laboratory? Yeah, in his in the dentist's office. So like, how do you do that? He's got a lab, correct? So a what happened machine, printer. is there was a room of where three dentists was using as their, you know, break room mm-hmm. uh, office. Yeah. So we kicked them out. <laughs> 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 and we converted it, that place so into a laboratory. Is it nice? Um, it's okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a decent looking laboratory. It's not a card table and a chair and in your no, garage. No, <laughs> it's a, it's a little better than that. Yeah. But we are fully equipped with, you know, top of the line ones like Zubler USA was only 15 minutes away from our office oh, nice. in Georgia. So we're fully equipped with Zubler things, whatever we can get from oh, Zubler. Nice. Yeah. Like the furnaces, the I milling just machine. I just learned about their vacuum. ovens. They're nice. Those ovens, the, the ceramic ovens, they come out so pretty. Really? They come out yeah. so pretty. We're thinking about buying another one. Yeah, yeah. nice. Nice. So, so so what else? So you, you're doing everything. So you meet every patient. You're no. doing Mm-mm. you're doing the smile design for this doc. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm actually doing whatever that they throw at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And no pressure there. No pressure there. No pressure there. But I think eventually, what's going to happen in this practice is that we we are going to outsource all the one to three small cases. Yep. yep. And they will just have me focus on the big all in four yeah, arches. Smart. Yeah. Because this is a this is a team with five dentists w- and one. You know, or surgeon. Wow. Prostose big. is also there. And they want me to, they would eventually want me to focus on just working on big, big arches. Sure. Because mm-hmm. we're doing about eight arches a month right now. And and the goal is to get to 15 arches a month. Wow. I was, I was going to say double. Wow. Well, with that many doctors, it should be possible. You're yeah. going to be busy. Mm-hmm. You're going to move there? That's eventually, uh, possibly. <laughs> maybe. Depending maybe. on how happy Yeah, depending stay. on how this, this thing goes. Because, yeah. you know. I want to keep my options open and be be safe with my decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, Makes sense. it's gonna be a big commitment to move a state. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever bring work from your lab down there to work on it? No. No. <laughs> no. You probably yeah. don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. For that. <laughs> no. I thought about that. No, I don't have time for that. But I did the opposite one time where I took the work from the office to the really? laboratory. Yeah, because we're still Catch waiting up. on the milling machine to arrive. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, like I just started working there like three weeks ago. Oh, really? Oh, oh all wow, right. Wow, real, all man. right. Yeah. So we're we're still building this lab. My first two weeks was just sitting there ordering f- things on the phone and online, yeah. setting things up, opening yeah. boxes. He was it was the best pay I got for, yeah. for such a small labor. <laughs> Didn't have to do much, and you get to open up yeah. boxes yeah. and presents. Yeah, but getting all new stuff, that's oh, so it's exciting. Oh, it's it's oh, like Christmas yeah. every day yeah. for two yeah. weeks. <laughs> I got another box. Yeah. Yeah, and totally. I got his credit card, so I, oh. got to, I, got to, I get to order whatever I want. <laughs> or you could go buy an oven today. Yeah. <laughs> I can if I want to. Yeah. <laughs> o- only limitation that he gave me was $20,000. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty For an sick. oven? That's no, so for, for the top for off. The car, right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. At yeah. once. He's per capped. Day. He's capped. Per day? <laughs> <laughs> I could spend that pretty easily, just saying. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's a casino around yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they do have them in Louisville. <laughs> yes. 35 minutes that's away. Cool. I was there Thursday. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, Thank thanks so you. much, man. That's oh, great. You're welcome. Great story. Yeah, Enjoyed this was talking fun. To you. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. link you up on Facebook. It's Toothmaster, yeah. right? It's Toothmaster. Step Toothmaster Bay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Do you guys play you. poker? Poker? Yeah. Maybe. I, I know Maybe. how, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. I know how. How many dental technicians do you think play po- plays poker? I, load. I don't know. Do you think so? I think I I've heard of a group that does something online. I don't know if it's poker or euchre or something, but <laughs> they said they get together and 
mm. do something online. But Why do you know. ask that question? Because I have gotten to playing poker. And you want to find somebody to play yeah. with? or what? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's put it out there. Yeah. Everyone yep. who wants to play poker. How do you, you play online? I mean, yeah, I do play online too. Yeah. But online, I play uh, VR poker. Oh, What's like that? the headset? Yeah, And the then Oculus? like you're sitting in the room. Poker VR? Oh, yep. that's cool. Oh, it is yeah. cool. Psychedelic. Yeah. That'd be trippy. Mm -hmm. Online, that's, that's the only poker I play online. Yeah. But I like to play poker, like house games or casinos. Poker room. So you're you're right at home when there's a dental show in Las Vegas. Oh heck yeah! I thought about moving to Vegas at one point. Yeah, because I got so deep into poker. Are you like <laughs> one of those people that has like aspirations to be like a master poker and you're on TV winning money and? Oh, well, I would like to get there one time. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Why soon. not? Right. Yeah. So I gotta show you this. So this is a little record that I've been keeping ever since end of July. He's showing us his phone. Look at that. Oh, my God. He's showing us his profits, y'all. Is that real? That's pretty yeah, good. ever since end of July. That's awesome. That's real online, how much no, money you've made? that's not from online. No, it's real money, that, period. That's uh, that's from, like, Elvis actual games. Really? Yeah. And this tells you everything. Like, it it, it shows how <laughs> grand is what I made ever since Well, I wasn't going to say that, but nice. Uh, you could beep that up. <laughs> 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 but the winning winning rate. So you're up high. Seventy six percent. Seventy six percent of the time you play poker, you win. Yes. Now no one's gonna want to play with you. <laughs> Actually, I really suck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cash cow, ATM. <laughs> come get my chips. <laughs> That's, good. That's awesome. So yeah, let's play some poker if there anybody's you go. willing to. You need to come do uh, what's the Visions Twenty One meeting. Yeah. It's in uh, January. January really? in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know Super what? Great I meeting. was never interested in that meeting until now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yes. You'll love it. And you know, all with, with all the travelings that I did for the shows yeah. in the past, I don't know why I never really visited casinos. Because Interesting. They're all over now. Now, every time I get to travel, that's, that's what that's I'm looking for. That's where you're for. going. Yep. yep. And I'm going to look for that casino near the hotel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Near the show. They're becoming more and more common. Yeah. With states opening up. And I'm finding out there's there's always one within the 30 minutes Uber ride. Nice. There's one in Chicago, too. Wow. Is we it? just parlayed oh, there is into one. Yeah. Yeah. gambling. In Indiana, Indiana, I think. They actually yeah. have two. One in Chicago, one in, Indi in Indiana. One in Indiana. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Horseshoe. Yep. Been there. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, guys. This was well, really thank fun. You. Maybe that sometime cool. we'll uh, play some poker. Yeah. Yes, I'll we'll give it a that. shot. I know how. With Monopoly money. There yeah. you go. Yes. Monopoly money. <laughs> yes. With Monopoly well, good luck money. to you. Yeah, thanks, thanks Deb. To us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so Have much. Have a good one. Good show, guys. All right. We are talking to James Mann. Mahan. 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 Mm -hmm. Mahan. Come on, buddy. James <laughs> Mahan. We are talking to James Mahan from the famous... PTC. infamous ptc training and just so program. you know we've been looking forward to this for a long absolutely. time jim thank you absolutely so the standard in our industry for teaching is to me has always been the ptc oh yeah for sure mm -hmm. give me the story of it where did it come from how long has it been around where did it start yeah john ness was a dental technician okay and he had a, well, obviously the originator of PTC, he had a 50-person dental lab mm -hmm. and had the same problems that everyone has, training new people, existing people, inconsistency, and in sure. all the things we know of. And Except so, the labs I, were, I was at. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He decided, <laughs> he decided he needed some type of training program. And he started with uh, the simplest one, basically, uh, framework design. He put it together. It was really quite rudimentary, but it really produced some decent results. And so he said, well, okay, I, I, that, that works. Now I'm going to do a crown and bridge program, teach people to wax. And John just had, he had an eighth grade education. Yeah. And wow. some people don't really know that. But he, he had a genius of finding out what is the... What is the baseline? What is the fundamental of what people actually have to know to be able to create their own ideas of, yeah. of how to do things? Yeah. And so after he developed that and it was working so well, he had been previously a salesman with Jolinko. And so oh he, had, he had a What's lot of old friends. What's name? With <laughs> yeah. Had a lot of friends and a lot of people in the industry, and they found out that he had this training program. Yeah. 
small, small industry. And so people began to say, can you show me what you do? Can you show me what you do? And, of course, John was a capitalist, and he said, well, I could show you, but I'll sell it to you. Yeah, yeah. And then that just expanded out into the other programs of ceramic and dentures and so forth. Do and you remember how long ago that was? Like, wasn't it, was it in the 80s? Or? It, was in the, it was in the middle 70s. Wow. Is when, is when he started. Wow. So, so he owned a lab. Mm-hmm. Was it a full-service lab? Full-service lab. For sure, yeah. Full-service lab. And it lab. just started with, I need to make sure everyone knows how to make a framework. And it was all meant initially just for people in his lab. Right. Awesome. Right. I remember yeah. a quote when he came to a night a long time ago, and he said, do what you do while you're doing it. And to this day... Like, that's how I focus. I'm just like, stay in the moment, work on your tooth, do everything you know, and just don't have anything else going on around you. And you know that quote is so simple, but a lot of people hear it, and they don't really understand what it means. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about it. Do what you do while you're doing it. What it is is staying in present time. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness. So I'm doing this, and that's the only thing I'm I'm doing. I'm not thinking about what's going to go next or what I already did. I'm just doing this to the best of my ability, and I fully know what it is my final product is. And when I'm finished with that, then I'll go to this. Yes. Hmm. Does that make sense? It does. But it resonated with me, like big time. When he said that, something clicked inside me, and I still remember it and say it to this day. It does me as well. And, you know, and, and when you're teaching people... You see that's their barrier, Mm -hmm. is that they cannot stay in present time exactly (laughs) what it is they're doing. They're they're looking at everything, you know, and and so in the the way we teach it is everything is a step by step procedure. So on step one, there is a final product of step one. Now, how well you do that influences step two, and so every step has that has that area. Do how well do I know it? How how precisely am I executing it? Mm-hmm. And so creates a pathway for people to rise to excellence because it's the, it's the way you think about it. We, we have these three divisions of objectives. Objective, clearly defined objective, and precisely defined objective. And so that thing that you want to do, most people, in fact almost all people, only really deal with clearly defined objective because yeah. once I feel as though I understand it well enough then you know we we're done I understand mm-hmm. it well enough as good as I need to and so there I go but this other position of precisely defined objective is another mindset that PTC tries just tries to teach is that okay now you're here what would it take for you to go here yep. and there's a lot to that. Sure. But if you can instill that in a student who, who is doing well and you say, well is okay, and that's where almost everybody is, but what if you want to be special? What if you want to be excellent? What if you, how would you raise that level of your experience to a higher level? I think it's really important to teach that, to yeah. give that person that thought process that they can follow, go down that road. So PTC is not just the basics. No. You know, I get that. Some are. I get that, <laughs> I get that question all the time. And, and people will say, well, is this a basic course or is it an advanced course? And I say, yes, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going to say. It's both. Because no matter where you are in any profession or where you are in dental technology, there are obviously, hopefully, things you don't know. Yeah. Now, it's not that we're going to tell you all the things that you don't know, but there are things that we're going to tell you that you haven't seen before mm-hmm. and you haven't experienced. I think the thing that PTC does best is distill the technology down to a point where it's so fundamental that anybody that can copy a direction can learn to do it. <laughs> I'm a great example of the whole whole process. When I graduated from lab school, I was second in my class. Everybody came to me to do their stuff and all, all the, yeah. because they thought I was a real, it was about 26 people in the class. Wow. And and I thought I was really something. <laughs> because obviously I was learning and I could yeah. do it really well. I got fired from my first job. 
because Too cocky. it took me <laughs> it it took me three and a half hours to wax a crown. Ah, uh, yep. And it was acceptable, but my instructors kept saying, "Oh, whatever you you know, what you're doing is so." Uh, uh, much High better end. than what an average <laughs> lab would do, and yep. and I it was like, I, I had this false idea. Yeah, that you didn't have to move. Your ass. You Excuse know what happens. <laughs> you know you know what happens. That was a life learning experience, yep. and I was I was bound and determined that that would never happen again. In fact, I I, I left the profession for a couple of years because of it. Really, it was just I, I just it hurt, crashed and burned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was always successful things that I did that's why I tried so hard in lab school but so come it comes down to the fact that PTC now is training people off the street if they come to us with no dental knowledge in three and a half days we're teaching people to wax full anatomical crowns successfully it's it's just phenomenal or be able to set a denture and wax a denture in three and a half days and you know, we, I mean, do you have a course or a school? Oh, yeah. What am I missing here? Yeah, well, so the they P- can come at the PTC training center. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that. we had, we used to have like fifteen students could come at one time, and it was just too many. Now we have six. Wow. So we have uh, the ability for six people to come, and it's an intensive training, but it surprises me sometimes of how effective the the training has been. Now, John Ness has been gone for 10 years, but guys at PTC have been looking at that material forever, and I teach it day by day by day. And the thing that drives me is that why is that student not understanding and not learning exactly what we're teaching? Yeah. There's a, and so that solution is what we put into the system. And so how many, thing, how many times can that happen before you have condensed down the system to to this is exactly what people need to know to do this job sure and it's amazing it really it really is uh, just phenomenal because from my experience it took me five years to be competent hmm. and yeah. now people are coming and spending that time with us and going to work in a laboratory so i didn't realize it was a facility i thought it was like, it's a training, but I didn't realize I it was a facility. I you gave it to labs or... to train their people. Like you sold it's it both, to them. It's both, right? Or... Yes. We have now online courses, okay. which everybody demands. Yep. And um, uh, they're, they're basically anatomy courses. And so it covers posterior anatomy, anterior anatomy, science of a smile. I love that one. And oral anatomy and physiology. And so those are things that don't have to be hands-on. Recently, we developed a program... Um, Contouring Anterior Bridges. Mm. Uh, that's an online program. And we developed it because when we do particularly uh, like consulting and training in laboratories, we also do that. Um, what we found was that the things coming out of the mill, especially the anterior cases, Need were help. having to have a lot of work yeah. done by, on them by experienced yeah. ceramics. Absolutely. And, and there was a real void there. And so... We know how our hands-on program work, and I was bound and determined to make an online program that worked as closely as we could to face-to-face training. So it's brand new. We just actually released it here at this show. Oh, really? <gasps> wow. Come on. And, wow, um, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So people can, um, anyone could come onto our website, buy it. And there is different types of packages, but one of the packages is includes a handpiece, includes a uh, oh, you set, get of, a hand piece? set of With instruments, wow. models, and three uh, composite bridges that are like a uh, porcelain buildup. And so then you get the video and step-by-step that you can download on your computer. I think you could learn... Decent contouring anterior bridges at your kitchen table. That's awesome. But so anybody can just go to the PTC website and they can pick out the courses that they're interested in and click on them and just credit card and yeah, yeah. be on now the way? This, this uh, hands-on course, um, online hands-on course, is the only one we have at this point. It's the first one that we've done because it was just one. But, uh, you got to start somewhere. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's one that's really needed. What we also have is uh, something that's relatively new, and um, it's kind of hard for people to grasp this, but when someone takes an online course, they could score 60 or they could score 100, and the laboratory owner is never really sure, even if they scored 95, that they got all the material because people memorize and they do all kinds of things when they take tests. So we have this other book that's a supplement to it, and it's very inexpensive. So you can buy an online course and have a verification workbook. The verification workbook has particular drills in it. So if a laboratory has a trainer or someone to follow up, even a a department head or department manager, the book is quite thin, but you go through that book with the student that finished the online course and verify that they knew that they understood and knew every single thing in the course. Like a follow-up test. That's awesome. It's really important to do that. Sure. The I've sat through online courses and turned it off. I didn't listen. I didn't hear it. Or just left it on and didn't <laughs> listen. And, and I'm taking this course, but yeah. I'm really not. Yeah. Yeah, but let's, yeah. Now, if you're an administrator of a laboratory, uh, uh, we give you the access to our online course measuring tools. Mm. So you can see every question that the person answered, how long it took them to answer oh, the question, wow. how many times they got it wrong. All of that stuff. So it's a real, uh, an easily managed, effective, effective sure. thing. But it could also help us zero in on the parts that they need help Precisely. on. Precisely. Precisely. They had to answer it four times. Obviously, they struggled. So then yeah. you focus on that area. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. So, I mean, to really put it in a in a nutshell, the weakest area of every dental laboratory worldwide is anatomy. Mm. If you think that a technician knows anatomy because they can make a tooth that's really not true they have a an idea in their mind an image of what this tooth should look like and a lot of times they just copy it and you'll see technicians just working 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 until it starts to match the thing that they have in their mind Mm -hmm. rather than work with a definitive action every single time to get the final result that they that they have every time we go into a laboratory and really shore up the bottom line of anatomy, everything changes. It, it wow. creates a big difference. And we've done that with a lot of labs oh, yeah. and, like that. What's the average student like? Someone that comes off the street that I barely know what a tooth is? Or do you want them to be a little bit more versed before they start the program? There's been an evolution. Ten years ago, I would say it's laboratory owners, trainers, and supervisors. Those were the only people that we taught. Hmm. These days, we still teach those, plus somebody who wants to enter the field. They're just, they find, I want to be a dental technician. They see that there's no schools near them. Yeah. And they don't have any, well. Yeah. They, and if there Way was, they don't want to spend two years yep. going through lab school. And so they call us and we say, we could probably get you started. Really? Yeah. Now, if a lab was interested in training A couple of their techs. What's Mm -hmm. the best way for them to do that? Send them all to the program? Do you guys go out to labs? You know, there's so many different levels of participation in PTC. They could um, start them with, um, if they're brand new, they could start them with an online course. Yeah. And they could do the follow-up. It really helps if you have someone who understands the program. Mm -hmm. In other words, if, if I was a laboratory and I wanted to have some type of training that was significant, I would send somebody from my lab to PTC okay. to learn how to be a trainer. Mm. That's what we did. Yeah. The, the training does a number of things. It teaches them the process. It teaches them the, um, the significance of standardization. And it teaches them how to manage a technology. Yeah. So you have a trainer, manager, coordinator, walks out and you know i don't get me wrong i'm not saying that they're perfect (laughs) yeah yeah but they've found out things that they can use to create a a better environment of training in their laboratory Hmm. where is the facility at we're just uh 20 miles south of san jose in california okay yeah so you get a nice trip out of it too well it's a beautiful area yeah. uh, we're uh, to put another perspective on it it's an hour south of san francisco okay some people fly into san francisco some people fly into san jose when sure. they come yeah but so 
It's interesting, you know, with the advent, I mean, PTC has been known forever to be analog training. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be my next question. I was going to ask, yeah. <laughs> How did something How that are you started moving in forward? <laughs> still be relevant? Yeah. So <laughs> we kind of operate from feedback from our customers. Sure. What do you have for digital training? What do you have for 3Shape? And so we developed a 3Shape training program. We take 3Shape broke it down into PTC step-by-step procedures. It fits perfectly well, but in our program, we add in all kinds of things like, all right, this is a line, this is the curve of speed, this is the buckle height of contour, and we indicate those things that PTC doesn't have. So the program teaches this is how you use the system, and this is how you correctly make posterior Hmm. crowns. So they get the language as well. They get the language as well. We recently did this. We found that um, there's a lot of lab. They have a need to upgrade their designer. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're not. They're, they, they just haven't come to the level, and there's a little bit of difficulty. So now in March, our first program that we're putting on at PTC is going to be a combination uh, crown and bridge waxing program and three-shape design. Mm-hmm. And so the so first designers comes, are going to be expected to wax. Yes, that's mm-hmm. actually pretty good. So that's a smart idea. Yeah. So, so what we found out is that initially we went into a laboratory that was having problem with design, and we took them through a waxing program mm-hmm. two day two days. It's not they got not it. a big deal. Wow. The problem with the designer that's never been an analog uh, technician is that they're looking at a two dimensional picture. When you hold the crown in your hand and you see the proper contours and all that kind of stuff, something switches in your mind about what you're not actually seeing on the screen that you should have been seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hear designers all the time saying, oh, it'd be great if the mill would actually give me what I designed. (laughs) You know, and I always say the mill gives you exactly what What you you designed. designed. You just didn't see what you didn't see. But this waxing... It's a real solution to yeah. to bring designers up into the area that so that they can really think with that technology. And we'll see how it works. Yeah. I know that we've done it in consulting with other laboratories and it's been wildly successful. Awesome. So PTC offers a consulting side where that's a <laughs> that's a, it's another thing, you know. Um let's say um a laboratory wants to train an entire department yeah. in PTC technology for dentures. Now, I recently went to a, a number of larger labs mm-hmm. to do that very thing. And so we take six or seven people out of a department and train them in three days <laughs> in whatever wow. that laboratory wants. And so when you when you hire a PTC for consulting, then you have the... You have the luxury of saying, this is exactly what I want to happen. <laughs> and, and you tailor it to that lab. Yeah, and then you tailor it to the, tailor wow. it to the lab. <laughs> That's a heck of a service. There's a lot of options. I mean, it's just like you can buy a book, you can buy an online course, you can buy training, you can buy consulting. Do you still have the VHS tapes? No. <laughs> we transitioned from VHS to DVD, and now we have them on memory stick. Yeah. yeah. I remember last year I got those laminated Oh, yeah. And I, they're all over our laboratory. Yeah. And our like technicians posters, right? loved them. Yeah. Yeah, because they used to be like just paper and you'd tear it off. But now they're this beautiful laminated. You can put them in front of you. They last forever. And what do they they're show? They're awesome. Anatomy. Just the planes, the surfaces, clusal anatomy, primary anatomy, where the planes are on the anteriors, the lobes. Uh, yeah. Quick reference. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. they're amazing. Do you do a lot of those kind of quick reference guides for various lot of things? Or, well, I'm not sure I understand the question, but what um, what she's talking about um, is just um, we normally use them as a desk reference pad. Okay. And yeah. they were disposable. Yeah. And uh, they were gray and not really kind of cool. And so we decided we're going to upgrade it, and now they're in full color and. It's just something nice. People hang them on the wall. There are labs who use them as desk reference. Yeah, you know, we do. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's whatever great. you want. Yeah. The um, when we were uh, had introduced um, TVS two thousand in the year two thousand, 
we introduced to the industry these things called drills, which are really a synopsis of a process. So the student learned the, the particular step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that was the that was the fundamental basis of how they operated. And of course, you can extrapolate on that. Yeah. And that was so so successful. Subsequently, we have taken all of those drills and condensed them down to probably one fourth of what they were. Has the same information, but anything that wasn't totally absolutely necessary we extract it out yeah you took the fat out and just put it in the nuts it's yeah. like the quick setup guide <laughs> for electronics it's a yeah. lot you like that. the big book and then you also have the quick fold out yep. oh, yeah just pull yeah. it in yeah. <laughs> you know and it's really a good way to test a person's understanding of what they're doing sure mm-hmm. and you know it's not like i'm on step 13 but you know i would say so how do you do this and it just so happens maybe that is step 13 yeah, but there is a specific thing about that that someone needs to know, and you know when you find that you create certainty in a technician, they not only produce a better product, they go a lot faster. Yeah, confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. who does who writes all your training guides? Is that you? The original, the whole original system was done by uh, John Ness and people that worked in the seventies. Yeah. And we continually update the books. I would hope, yeah. We, had, we used to uh, sell the, the tech books bound. And I said, you know what? That's limiting. They, we have to have a spiral-bound book so I can change way. whatever page I want, yeah. whenever I want, add whatever I want. And, l- and I, I can tell you, almost after every seminar, I have another better idea of how to explain something better. Wow. And over a period of time, <laughs> we'll just update. And so on the, on the front of you, it doesn't invalidate the other books by, by a long shot. I mean, you could buy a, a book you had 10 years ago will have the same fundamental mm-hmm. information, but the one that you buy today, it will be condensed down so that... I, I don't even know a better way to say it. You don't know what you don't need to say until <laughs> you evolve until you into, that, yeah. into yeah, that direction. Sure. That's so you know. true, though. You don't know until you know. And you can yeah, just get you right say to a, it. Yep. You could say 100 words when you could have said it in 20, and the person really gets it. Yep. And they don't have to Makes filter out all the stuff that yep. you didn't need to say. Yep. That's awesome. So what is it, ptc.com or? ptcdental.com. Dental. PC. PTCDental.com. PTC. Mm-hmm. And nice. obviously we have two divisions. One is the training division, PTC, and the other one is Blue Dolphin. And, and that's Blue the education Dolphin. materials? Blue Dolphin is the education materials. It's the supplies that go with the program. Yeah. Gotcha. So typically if you're, if you're in a um, contouring program, you would want the tools that are the same as in that contouring program. They've got brushes and, you know. I want to check just, out that one yeah. that comes with the hand piece. I want to. Yeah. I mean, I don't do that kind of stuff, but I kind of want to learn how to do it. That would be a great way to do it. Yeah. It would be a real uh, real eye-opener for you. I bet. Yeah. It's hard to se- tell someone. And as a matter of fact, when I was just talking to um, some prosthodontists that are Educa- educators yes and um you know i was saying so you know we teach people to you know wax crowns in three and a half days and i could just see their eyes glaze over they're like going that is not possible how the heck do you that do is not possible that? yeah yeah but it's possible so what does ptc stand for productivity training corporation there you go pretty simple. that's awesome and yeah. we're so glad you stopped James, by i've thank wanted you to talk so to you much. forever yeah. appreciate yeah. it yes thank you well i've been looking forward to it and we, t- we talked last year yeah, we never yeah really remember it, so absolutely yeah. thanks a lot james great appreciate thank you, it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. a huge thanks to step and james for sitting down with us at the whitmix digital forum genuinely it was super great to finally talk to these two wonderful people in our industry If there are any dental technician poker players out there looking for a game, y'all, reach out to Step online. He showed us how much money he was making. Yeah, I bleeped out the number, so no one can hear it. You don't want to hear it. I don't remember the number, but I can tell you this. It was a lot. So (laughs) we talked to a lot of people on this podcast, and a common theme is the difficulty of training new employees. Sounds like James and the PTC have it all ready for you. You just have to want it. So Check it out, you guys. And we know we all don't just want it. 
We need it. So check out what they have to offer at ptc-dental.com and help your technicians make better restorations. Thanks, everybody, and cheers until the next digital Whitmix Digital Forum. <laughs> Whitmix Digital Forum. And to the next Whitmix Digital Forum. I love that event. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. And we will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye. See ya. Wow. Was that a drop of the mic? <laughs>